Last time on Final Fantasy IV, we washed up on these shores and ended up in the town of Mysidia, which was an awkward time for everyone. Now, before we begin our journey to Mount Ordeals, where we'll supposedly wash away our bloodstained past, I would just like to show off that, yes indeed, I've equipped some of the augments, Auto Potion on Poram, Counter on Cecil, he's actually going to be using his augment, and Item Lore on Palum. Palum and Poram already have some pretty good abilities already, uh, well, abilities, commands, whatever you want to call them, and we'll be showing those off later. Except, maybe Bluff, I don't use that one as often, just because I don't really use black magic too often in battles, if that wasn't already obvious. If we still had Rosa with us, that'd be a different story, since I could just recover MP almost every turn, so that does help you go, okay, every once in a blue moon I'll use a spell in battle, and not just save it for boss fights. Even though, quite frankly, it's kind of pointless since there's usually a save point before a boss fight, and to be honest, um, I still don't use that spells that often in battle, even with Rosa. <laughs> I should. I acknowledge that I should, but I don't. So, I haven't really done any grinding, so Palom and Poram are still a little low on HP, but since they're in the back, that shouldn't be too much of a problem. Cecil's got this handled, and if anyone attacks him, he counters. That's just a passive ability, he'll automatically attack anyone. I should also make note that we did get that new sword, the Deathbringer. Now, Deathbringer has a pretty good ability, actually, which we'll see in a bit. I know for a fact that uh, we do end up seeing that one, but I won't bring it up just yet. Bring it up with Deathbringer. I attempted a pun and got nowhere near one, so I'm just going to give that one up now. So anyway, Mount Ordeals is a little ways away. See that little spot on the bottom screen? The little foresty area? Well, if we hadn't been interrupted by a battle, we would have seen where the mountain is. Alright, so we just have a bunch of these guys. Uh, I believe these guys are still able to use, um, uh, Gradual Petrify. But again, I'm pretty... That was pathetic. I'm pretty sure it's only Gradual Petrify. I'm pretty sure there are just, like, straight-up uh, Petrify in one turn attacks in this game, though. I don't think it's all Gradual. I do kind of prefer Gradual Petrify, though. Ooh! Nice! Yep, there's the Deathbringer's ability. Not the Deathbringer! The only thing it does is death! And actually, that's a pretty good chance to instantly kill enemies, but yeah, it does have the instant death effect on it, so... It's kind of useful. I say kind of, because despite the fact that we just got this sword and it is pretty powerful, it's not actually going to be that terribly useful in the next dungeon. You might remember a reason why, but uh, it's a good thing Palom and Poram are here to assist Cecil, because he probably couldn't do this alone. I do actually like this portion of the game, because uh, despite how useful Cecil's been as just like a straight-up physical character before this point, He's not really going to be that useful in the next dungeon. I mean, he can still attack, but other than using items, there's nothing major he can do. And hey, Fire and Blizzara. Those are some pretty good spells. They're just upgraded Fire and Blizzard spells, but they're appreciated nonetheless. So, here we are at Mount Ordeals. Alright, what's going to happen first? Cutscene or enemy encounter? Let's see. Well, there's just a random wall of fire here. How's it going, random wall of fire? Well, bye! <laughs> So, I don't know if there's any good reason why there was just a fire on the mountainside that was eternally burning. Uh, Gameplay-wise, it's just there to make sure you'd go to Mesidia and get Palom and Poram. Yeah, it's just a broken bridge check to make sure you have your characters, and now we can move on. Story-wise, I guess it's just here to show that uh, Palom is, well, full of himself. Unlike Rydia, who hesitated before destroying the random block of ice. Anyway, here we have the villains. I do always like being able to see what the villains are up to. More stories could, should do that. Because otherwise, the villains just come out of nowhere, and you never want your villains to just come out of nowhere. You gotta get to know them, you know? 
get intimate with them, really understand Golbez and how much of a jerk he is. Oh, that evil Golbez, he's sending out this here hood man to go kill Cecil. So maybe it is for the best that we did get it. Well, I can't say it's for the best that we got attacked by Leviathan, because, you know, everyone's dead now, other than Cecil. But it seems that Golbez does actually have uh, some pretty good tabs being kept on Cecil if he already knows he's going to mount ordeals. So he probably would have seen us coming by boat and probably would have destroyed us anyway, so... Mm. I want to kill Cecil! Oh, damn. Yeah, uh, Kane, you suck. I'm sorry. Well, that was fun. Anyway, back to Cecil. Alright, so we're getting into a fight, and we should have, of course, some undead enemies. Uh, remember back at Mount Hobbs when we had to fight those guys? Yep, Cecil is just as useless. He got a critical. I'm not completely full of shit. Anyway, yes, so Cecil is useless physical attack-wise because these guys all resist darkness, so attacking them with your darkness element sword or using your darkness element ability is completely useless, unless you get a critical on an admittedly weak enemy. Skeletons do suck. Not in general, just that specific enemy type. But yeah... However, the main difference between this and Mount Hobbs is, before, we had a pretty large party to pick up Cecil's slack, whereas here, we have two fairly frail mages, and they are unfortunately kind of prone of, to being put to sleep, and souls do love their status effect spells. Oh boy, I hate this enemy type, to be honest. But let's not worry about that. This is almost done with. So, I did actually use the ability Cry. I believe I mentioned this last time, but Cry is one of the best abilities in the game, because it just lowers everyone's defense. So, that actually does aid Cecil a lot. Uh, whereas before he was pretty much completely useless, being a much lower level. Well, should be a much lower level, as he should be here, really. Um... He didn't really have anyone who could exactly bring him up to fighting ability, whereas Porum has the cry ability, therefore she can lower enemies' defenses, so while they might resist Cecil, you still have a bit of an edge, making him not completely useless, so hey, teamwork! Of course, since they are undead, they also resist the instant death attack, so yeah, sorry Deathbringer, you were a pretty cool sword for all of five minutes, and now you're not. That being said, uh, I'm just going to keep using Cry, because again, it's one of the best abilities. We also have the Twin Cast ability. Uh, true to its name, that really should be used with another character who has Twin Cast. Now, I forget exactly how Twin Cast works with Palom and Poram. Um, I think it's... I don't know if it's a random spell... I do know it has some pretty powerful attacks, but it is quite the large charge time to use it. Okay, now if I remember correctly, it is... I think it's actually percentage. Like, you do have to get lucky to get some of the better spells. I forget if it actually works different in earlier versions. Uh, there are quite a few in this version, uh, as opposed to previous versions, but I don't think Palom and Poram can use them all. Again, that's another thing I'll explain later. But anyway, we're almost done with the first floor. So what do we get? What do we get? What's our, uh, oh, five antidotes. In case we get poisoned, that'll be very useful. If in, in case we get poisoned and then, uh, Poram gets put to sleep or something. And I thought there would be a cutscene right there, but I am wrong. But I think there's going to be one soon. 
This does look like the area for it. Come on, terrain. Don't lie to me. I know you're hiding something. Oh, it's hiding enemies in a vast amount of nothingness. Nothing major here, just a new type of zombie, which, honestly, zombies aren't so bad, though that guy does actually have a fair bit of strength. I'm surprised Palum's not at critical health. Lucky me, he's not at the very least. Oh, yeah, and of course, uh, Porum has Libra, so that's pretty good. It did kind of suck when Rosa was gone to lose that, but she wasn't gone for long, so he didn't lose that ability for very long. Now we can look at enemies' health again, which is always nice. You know, Libra-type spells aren't really that useful unless they permanently show you the enemy's health, like Tattle in Paper Mario. That's a really good ability because... Uh, well, none other. Other than, you know, getting little descriptions of the enemies, which is always pretty cute. Gameplay-wise, there's nothing else much to say about it other than just, oh, hey, yeah, you can see enemies' health forever, which is pretty good. There's a badge that does that, but why would you waste badge space and not use Goombario? I mean, really, who would not use Goombario? He's basically just Mario a second time. He got a problem with Mario a second time? Minus the hammer, I guess. Alright, well, any... Really? Alright, so anyway, I was just about to mention uh, the bluff uh, command, which I believe I mentioned last time as well. It's pretty simple, it just raises the uh, power of uh, black magic type spells, so perfect for Palom. Of course, it does use up a turn, but it's not really a huge deal. Especially if you take into account that uh, you can just have Porum heal the enemies in the meantime, since they are undead, you can't heal them to death, so, you know, let Palum do his thing and bluff if you want, and then have Porum pick up slack for a little while. Ooh, Thundara, of course, upgraded Thunder spell. Uh, again, it doesn't matter too much, because it's just basic enemies who aren't a huge threat. Ah, here's the cutscene. And hey, look who it is! Hey, Tella, remember when you just stormed out? You feeling any better, dude? Uh, no, actually. I don't even know what you're talking about. Palum, we've already seen his name come up with the word Sage beneath it. That's how all characters are introduced. You don't need to say it. Of course, them being mages from a town that is all about the magic, they know about Tella, and apparently something else. I wonder what Palum was about to say. It is so not obvious to me. Yeah, it is kind of weird that we just ran into him. What a coincidence that we happen to be in the same place. Oh, they're kind of dead. As is some other dude that you never got to meet. He was pretty cool, though. If only could have met Yong. I think you would have liked him. He does a lot of punching. I'd say he's kind of like the equivalent of you, except in punching, but he, his stats don't go down, and actually he's pretty cool, so, uh, not exactly, but y you'd get along. Look, he's sad about it. His head's down. So, did you get attacked by a sea monster, or what? Alright, well, cool. So, since Tell has calmed down quite a bit since we last saw him, to the point where he will actually talk to us, and not be all angry, he, it seems like he's gonna join us, which is good, because, you know, these two kids are pretty powerful mages, but they're also small children. We should probably have someone else in the party. That is not the small children. Says you, Palum. Oh, you know, become a paladin, that sort of thing. How can you not love a sword called the Deathbringer? <sighs> Guess he's not going to be XXXX Cecil Harvey. I don't even remember what that username was, so I'm just going to stop right there. 
Golbez is the cause of literally everything bad that's ever happened in the world. I stubbed my toe last week. God damn it, Golbez, why did you do that? Alright, so yes, indeed, it seems that Tella has calmed down enough to where he will rejoin the party. So now we have a party of three mages and one knight type character, and Tella's definitely not gonna be in the front. Unlike me, who's gonna be young forever, cause I'm Palum. Yeah, probably not much, right? I mean, he hasn't done anything yet, so... We just have to show up as a paladin and an old man with a really powerful spell, and he is done for. Don't even need to put in any extra efforts. Alright, so we're gonna put him in the back, and... Not put him in the center? Huh. Usually I'd put Tell in the center. Past me, you're slipping. Anyway, let's give him the healing staff, since that heals targets. Good both for us, when we use it as an item, and it's good... Actually, no, can you use it on the undead? I seem to remember not being able to use uh, that ability on enemies. You can only use it on yourself. I could be wrong about that, but I remember having trouble with that, so I'm pretty sure I'm right. Anyway... I don't think Tell has really gotten anything new, but just as a reminder, this is his kind of small spell list, honestly. Remember way back when, when Rydia had no spells whatsoever and his spell list looked pretty large? Seems so long ago. And now he's got sweet FA in terms of spells, because he's kind of being over... or uh, not overdone. Um, outdone by children. I can't believe I forgot the word outdone. Anyway, there should be a treasure chest over here. What do we get? Ether. That'll be useful for someone. By the way, uh, I don't think I've mentioned the effects of drain-type spells on undead. Uh, word of advice. Don't use drain-type spells on undead. Uh, HP or MP. Because it's basically just the reverse of normal drain spells. Whereas if you use drain on an enemy, you'll get their HP. Osmos, you'll get their MP. With undead, nah, you lose HP and MP, because they're undead. That, them's the rules, so, uh, yeah, don't do that. Figured I should warn you about that sort of thing. So, anyway, on we go. And we get another ether. Game, are you trying to be subtle about Tella's lack of MP? Because, uh, if you are, it's not working. Oh yeah, right, the old man is his... Well, actually, to be honest, that could just be various sounds from him. Okay, so maybe it was Tello that hissed. He is pretty old, it could be his bones hissing, so... We'll just leave it at that. Even if I'm pretty sure Palm would be the type to start hissing. Seems like it's something he'd do. Palm's a punk like that. Alright, let's use one of these here tents, since the cottage isn't exactly necessary. Would like to start building up a supply of cottages first. Uh, also, you might want to keep some tents for a uh, certain thing that we could actually do right now. Um, I actually uh, forgot to do that certain thing that I could do right now, and it's not going to be for a while that I actually do it. So, uh, whoops, my mistake, but it's side quest stuff. Hey, so, Palum keeps making noises, it figures. Seriously, Palum, what is with you right now? Is it the lack of oxygen? Yeah, I know, Palum's here. Okay, seriously, Palum, quit it. You're kind of creeping me out. Oh no, a screen tint! That's right, I'm actually a father. A father of zombies. By the way, could you make this battle quick? I've got to get them to school after this. It's uh, a little irresponsible of me. I did have to kill you first. But nonetheless, I don't want to deny them their education. So anyway, this is Scarmeleon, 1200 HP, 23 strength, and the spell Thunder as a counter.
And thankfully, Thunder is only a counter to whoever uses it. He doesn't counter the entire party whenever you attack him. Because if he did attack the entire party, well, his magic's actually pretty strong, so we'd be in a bit of trouble. Of course, the problem here is you would be tempted to use party attack since they... because there are those zombies right there. But, um, don't, because then this happens. Now, Cecil can definitely take a few of those hits. Doesn't have as much resistance, so he does take a little more damage, but his high HP should allow him to not take as much damage or die slower over time, I guess. And they are really kind of ganging up on Cecil. That's bad. Okay, Tello, that's fine. Especially since, yeah, they only get 52 HP off of him, so yeah, good on you. Do, do that, please. So, I'm going to show off Twin Cast here. Let's see what we get. We get Comet, which is a party attack. And we fucking Paper Mario'd them to death. Oh dear, the flesh, and also my internal organs. Those also are in very much pain. Oh, what a world, what a world. Alright, a couple of level ups off of that. That wasn't such a bad boss at all. I don't know why Golbez made such a big deal about those elemental archfiends. They don't seem so bad. What's everyone got to think about this? Well, not really. He probably would have countered you to death. That was kind of Twin Cast's work there. I got lucky. A little bit. I could have finished him off even without it, but that made it easier. Eh, don't worry about it. There are just some easy battles in an RPG. It happens. Thank you. Oh, wait. Hey, are you the Emperor? Because that whole I'm going to die to become stronger thing has kind of been done already. Okay, so, joking time over. Skarmeleon's second form is actually really, really tough. Also, he starts with a back attack, so before the battle, if you want to rearrange your party so that we start in the front instead, you should do that. Uh, I don't think it's a huge deal since you can just have one character switch and then everyone switches, and quite frankly, that's the least of your worries. Okay, so... So the Elemental Archfiends in this game are actually very, very tough. In the original version, this battle was a pushover, and is kind of infamous for being really, really, really easy. Not so in this version of the game. In both versions, he has counterattacks, Cursed Elegy, and Gas. Uh, poison Gas, it's just called Gas in this version, I think, though, but yeah, nonetheless, he will counter two different things. He will counter physical attacks, and he will counter magic. And unlike in the original games, you don't just want to come in here blindly and start attacking with no plan. Because the thing is, if you do that, he will kill you. Again, unlike the original, where you could just attack him nonstop, and his counters did not matter. I'm not showing off getting owned by counters here because this is already bad enough with his high attack power and his ability to cause blind. Thankfully, he only did it to Palum, who doesn't really need his eyes anyway. Now, the thing about the Elemental Archfiends in this game, though, is the fact that, while they can be some of the toughest battles in the game, there is a way around it, and you might have noticed that already. So, he might counter physical and straight-up magic attacks, or black magic attacks, rather. However, using items, weapon special abilities, or cure magic will not cause him to trigger any sort of counter attacks. So, as long as you go into this fight with some sort of strategy that isn't just beat his face in in the way you would with any other Final Fantasy boss, you will actually make this battle pretty easy. That is the thing I really like about Final Fantasy IV, is just the fact that uh, it can be really tough, but it's not just, uh, I don't know, cheap difficulty? I guess I could go with that. It does feel like it at times, but again, if you just do a standard fight as you would in any other game in the series and 
attack and do nothing else, then yeah, the, oh, uh, hopefully he doesn't counter my counter. Does he counter my counter? Good, he doesn't counter my counter, but anyway, yeah. Uh, whereas most battles are just solved by beating the boss's face in, don't do that here. You can't kind of get away with it with some of the, uh, not really as important bosses, but generally, you are going to want to make use of your other spells, you know, your non-standard stuff, like using your cure on zombies. Also, I forget if Revive will one-hit kill him. That does work on some undead bosses in the series, but I've never tried it here. For a moment, I thought she fell over him, like, well, I'm dead. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so use healing items on him, use cure spells on him. Uh, of course, don't neglect yourself. Since he does do a lot of damage, you are going to want to cure yourself quite frequently. Uh, of course, don't bother wasting a turn crying him because you're not going to want him to uh, hit him with standard attacks because, again, he's undead, so Cecil's not going to do much damage anyway. Might as well just do it the easy way and... Well, I, I guess technically speaking, the counters do work, so I don't know, maybe you might want to use a turn to cry for that, but honestly, I would just focus on healing everyone and just keeping some damage on him, because, uh, oh, if I didn't mention his stats, uh, he's got 7,046 HP, 22 strength, and, uh, yeah, I already mentioned his, uh, uh, oh, uh, I think he also has, uh, silence? I don't think I've seen him use it, but, uh, my notes say that he does have silence. Uh, but anyway, yeah, uh, yeah, that's the, that's the stuff he has. However, he doesn't have anything anymore because he's dead. Double dead. Triple dead? He won't be bothering us anymore is what I'm trying to say. And this time, we really are done here. And check out all of that experience and money we get. Oh, man. Two levels for Palom and Porom. Shell and Teleport. Shell raises your uh, magic resistance. Teleport will get you out of dungeons. And what did Palom get? Bio. Uh, I always think that's a poison spell, but actually, I think it's just a non-elemental spell that does some pretty decent damage. And it also uh, induces sap on certain enemies, I think. Oh, whoops, I forgot there was a mountain there. Oh, dear. Okay. <laughs> well, that's the end of that. A fearsome foe, to be sure. The fearsome foe that just backed off a mountain like an idiot. Well, that one, I guess. Yeah, he was pretty monstrous. And zombie... Zombious? Zombish? However you say it, we got a red fang. Let's inspect this weird grave right here. You mean I was born from a rock? And Cecil was eviscerated. The end. Long have I awaited this. The day that you would come. I'm going to read a whole lot of stories to you. Which pains me more than you can know. To end it, I will gift to you my light. Though in so doing, I condemn myself to sorrow greater still. I'm just really sad in general. No other road remains. Eeyore, is that you? See this sword? It's really nice looking, but makes me sad. Oh, it's floating. Cool, I guess. Bid farewell to your bloodstained past. Forsake the darkness you once embraced, or the light will find no hope. I'm beautiful. Vanquish the dark knight. You and he are one. I am so into this. Hey, how's it going? There are two of them! I'm seeing double! Four Cecils! Cecil! Look out! Stay back. This is a fight for me and me alone. Because it's my dark side, so I'm going to fight him alone and it's going to be really cool. I've wrought in my test. 
And one I do not mean to fail. Yep, that was it. <laughs> Why do you look so tired? He attacked you once and then you healed yourself. Oh, that's pretty great. So anyway, yeah, the solution there was to not attack Shadow Cecil. May it be your strength, though it be the last of mine. Alright, you've proven that you've escaped your bloodstained past by not attacking your shadow self. Now go out and murder hundreds of monsters and also probably kill the guy who has wronged you. You learned a good lesson here, Cecil, and now you're hot, so I think you're in a pretty good spot. Go on, buddy, you got this. Okay, I, I get it. Wow, the music is really excited about this. Okay. <laughs> you did it. Good job. Congratulations. Oh, by the way, uh, another pretty good thing happens here. And there's that. That doesn't get fanfare, though. It's not as important. Hooray! That also happened. It didn't get a cutscene. Sad voice just left and was like, Oh, shoot! The old guy was looking for Meteor. Um, Okay, here, have some spells. So anyway, yeah, now Recall is useless because Tella just has all of his spells, and now he also has Meteor. Want my autograph? Of course, sure, yeah, let me just get some paper and a pen first. Alright, everyone, let's go murder Golbez, come on, chop chop! Come on, let's get killin'! You learned how to move past the darkness inside you, and to move past your bloodstained past. So now, we're going to kill Golbez. Do, 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 do. Gotta go kill Golbez. And here we are. So, Cecil is now level one. Meaning, he is really, really vulnerable right now. However, he also has a sword that is light elemental. So, we're kind of at the opposite point we were at the start of Mount Ordeals. At the beginning, we had a Darkness Sword, even though we were fairly powerful, we didn't do much damage. Now, we're level 1, fairly low stats, but our Light Sword should be able to take care of the undead here pretty easily. You will want to take a trip down the mountain rather than teleport down the mountain, just because that'll help you get a lot more experience, although, you know, you can just go down the mountain, fight some zoos, and hope that Cecil doesn't die horribly. Uh, and of course, he also has Cure, but at the moment that's not too terribly useful since he's only got 10 NP, and to be honest, he's not really a very good healer anyway. It's pretty much just supplemental for everyone else. We got a whole lot of spells. I'll probably go over these later on when we get them with different characters, 
But if you want to re read their descriptions, then hey, go ahead. But uh, yeah, we got a whole lot of stuff. Uh, pretty much every spell in the game, if not all of them. However, you might also notice that Tella only has 90 MP, but Meteor is 99 MP, meaning he can't actually use it. How odd. Oh well, I guess we just won't use it in battle then. So we'll equip as much as we can, which isn't much, we'll need to go back to Mesidia and buy stuff. And I guess, for the time being for you, next time on Final Fantasy IV, hopefully Cecil will be, will be just a little more powerful. Uh, we'll also go back to Mesidia, but that powerful part is also pretty darn important.